Whew. Wow. I mean, <laughs> wow. Sorry, I literally just got back from the theater, so excuse my fangirling. So I'm sure by now all of you have heard over Twitter or Facebook or Discord, whatever the hell you use to communicate that Dune 2 is quickly becoming a must watch for everyone across the board. And it sounds pretty generic of course, but in the wake of our current Hollywood climate, there are only rare opportunities for us the audience to band together as one to truly witness spectacle. Some including myself would have called that the norm less than half a decade ago. But damn does it feel so good to say that all of the hype, all of the preparation, all of the delays, and all of the promotion was worth it in order to realize the greatness, the masterpiece, the triumph that is Dune 2. I imagine this is what it's like, and this is what the outcome could and should look like when everything goes according to plan. What it looks like when the director has a vision and the talent to back that up. What it looks like to have a cast of actors at the top of their game, all with different experiences, works to their craft, and grace and preparation when it comes to their ability. But when mixed together in that nice, nice crock pot, the taste just leaves you speechless. What it feels like to have the audio and the visuals take control over your entertainment experience. There's no thinking about what's for dinner or the event after the movie. No annoying bloke next to you talking to its mates throughout the entirety of the movie because we have the attention span of a squirrel. Just complete and utter immersion. Perfection is what some might call it. A feat that only movies like Top Gun Maverick, Oppenheimer, The Batman, and in a way, Avatar The Way of the Water have been able to hold and achieve in our most recent Hollywood era. And while admittedly this is probably going to be my shortest review video on this channel because of the avoidance of spoilers and the fact that this movie demands your money, time, and attention. But the many incredible feats that Dune 2 was able to achieve were not only monumental in our current day in terms of box office, I'm predicting that of course, setting a new standard when it comes to directing, what a movie can achieve visually when resources are used right, what a movie can achieve when people surrounding the film care about their craft, how a movie can make you feel and sway your emotions with a dramatic and intense musical score, but in that same breath, a monumental feat that I would say is just as important for the future of Hollywood and to a dying breed of entertainers that Hollywood and audiences alike are so desperate to fill. The Movie Star. And when it comes to the execution and, predictably, the future success of Dune 2, here in 2024, we all just witnessed stars being born. Stars made and called upon to carry the mantle, and stars that we, the audience, can and will champion for. But here, let's at least bare minimally talk... Okay, very easy and to the point. Dune 2 follows a much more linear narrative compared to the first for all of the people out there that thought the first one was confusing. The story picks up the story of our boy, our messiah Paul Atreides, set on revenge on the Arcanans after the murder of his pops and destruction of his house and name. Still with the Fremens, Paul and his mother Jessica, played by the absolutely stunning Rebecca Ferguson. How does she do it? Paul and the Fremen band together in their collective fight against their mutual enemy. But you see, the more time Paul spends with the Fremen, the more and more they believe that he's their promised messiah here to lead them to the promised land. Meanwhile, the Arcanans aren't liking what they're seeing with all of this fighting back and the whole sounding of the messiah, so they enlist the brutal and psychotic nephew of the Baron and Fayed Rothra in order to get the army back in line so they can destroy House Arcanan and control the spice for their emperor once and for all. But is Paul the promised messiah that could lead his people to the future? And if he does, what kind of future does that entail for the entirety of the galaxy? I've already touched on and pretty much glazed on some of the more surface level positives when it comes to Dune 2, like how exactly this is the type of movie that IMAX is made for, or how a finished product could and should look like when a weld-oiled machine is working at maximum capacity with everything going according to plan. But when you dive deeper into the context, nuance, and themes of the movie overall, you'll come to realize why Dune 2 is and will be regarded as one of the best sequels that we've ever seen. 
the representations and themes of religious dogma, the dangers of occultist mindset, and the past that blind faith when it comes to the masses are some of the best you're ever going to get when it comes to a high budget and quality box office movie such as this. And while the acting across the board was absolutely spectacular and spot on throughout the entirety of the runtime, with experienced actors such as Rebecca Ferguson, Josh Brolin, and Javier Bardem continuing to deliver magnificent performances while barely breaking a sweat, what I personally took away from this movie overall, an aspect that I alluded to and have touched on a little earlier in the video, future stars were made in this movie. Timothy Chalamet is no longer a questionable box office appeal. Movies such as Wonka and now Dune 2 have kind of solidified that argument. The way he can seamlessly change his tone, energy, and charm when it comes to his characters is nothing less than remarkable and something that Hollywood's dream boy Chris Pratt could never dream of. I know it's always going to be a questionable take, but Zendaya in my eyes is perceived much more as a celebrity compared to say a movie star, and I'm sure that others weren't surprised, but I'm here to say that I was pleasantly surprised. The emotions that she was able to display in certain scenes with just her eyes or certain mannerisms to the character really build on her resume to be taken seriously in the future. But my god, when I say did the stocks skyrocket when it come to Austin Butler and Florence Pew Pew. And let me tell you, because this is going to be a deep cut, only the bare minimum of people around my age range will remember this, but look at our boy. Who would have thought that we would have gone from this to this? What a journey. But let me tell you, these four actors, in my opinion, have the ability to become the quote-unquote faces of our new generation of Hollywood. Actors with the talent, the craft, the dedication, and the charisma to have what it takes to hold that weight. At the end of the day, Dune 2 seems destined for great things when it comes to the current Hollywood landscape, the future of Hollywood movie making, and a testament to us the audience that cinema isn't dead. A well-directed, well-acted, and visually stunning masterpiece that demands your time, money, and attention with every definition of the meaning. A movie that demands the people involved to elevate their own game in order to manage the task at hand, and a movie that delivers and rewards those who do. And in a day and age, there are only a few times, if that, a year where spectacle can be witnessed by the masses, and if this review hasn't sold you on that, well, I don't know what to tell you, mate. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video, and if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm gonna start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. If you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.